Um, uh, my stream apparently cut off. Hopefully it'll last. If it doesn't, apparently I, I can't stream because I'm using OBS and I got a segmentation fault, so that wasn't good. Uh, hopefully the stream will last for more than a tenth of a second this time. Um, let's go ahead and go back over to this. And if it crashes again, I'm just going to call it and just say I can't stream. Um, okay, so we're here on, um, we're here on Replay here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and load up my own uh, version of, uh, my own copy of Leaflet. And I'm also going to load in a couple of libraries I have that I've written previously. Uh, I will try to put the uh, link, I'll make a note here to put the GitHub link that I have uh, down into the panel information. Um, so, uh, so you will be able to see where this library is. It's not a secret library or anything like that. Okay. So let me find my... I'm going to do leaflet first, I think. And I'm going to use the minimized version because, of course, we're not looking at the library. We're, we're uh, just trying to use the library. And one of the nice things is I don't have anything organized really well, so... It will take me a while to find stuff, um, during which I will patter, apparently. Okay. Um, well, this might be embarrassing. I might not actually have it. Um, if you use it from them, all, you'll, all they'll do is they'll basically include a script source for you. And apparently I do not have Leaflet, the minimized version. Let's see if I have the... I do apparently have the... Um, the full version. Let me get the latest version here. So we're gonna look for the latest version here. And let's move this over here. Um, okay, so this is a pretty recent version here. It looks like it's uh, from September. It might not be the latest version, but I, I have actually done this before, so I'm sort of cheating here. I'm not totally in the dark about what I'm doing. I've done this exact project before, and I'm trying to replicate uh, what I've done before. So it's not it's not exactly... I'm kind of cheating here when I say I'm, I'm not doing this for the first time. And I will go ahead and upload file. You will not be able to see the upload window, hopefully, uh, because I've got a lot of other stuff in here. But we're going to upload leaflet.js. And let's see, we need to put it in the, lib in the lib folder. There we go. And now I'm going to also do uh, a BC lib that I have which is just my own library, and you can look at it, and it's not, not a secret. Um, in fact, the Replit link is below in the panel. Uh, so if you want to go to the Replit link, you should be able to look at any of these files. You won't be able to edit them, but you will be able to look at them. So let's see if I can find my own li library. And I have. And I'll discuss more about what's in that library uh, in, a, in a minute. So let's go ahead and see if we can add a... Um, I think we have to do an upload. It's a little bit ugly here. Um, and there it is, and I have to move this into the lib as well. And now let's go ahead and, and load in uh, my... I call it a staging library. It's it's really... It's really... I really use it a lot, and I really need to move the stuff in it to the main library. But this is sort of like a testing uh, library, and if I can find it, we can I can upload it. And, oh, it's right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload that as well. Okay, and let's go ahead and put that in lib as well. Okay, so now we can go over here to index.html and get started. Uh, we are going to need to, uh, usually I actually delete all of this stuff, but I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be proper here and not delete it, even though I'll, it'll work without most of this stuff. So let's go ahead and script source in the stuff we need. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this in the stream somewhere, but I am going to make mistakes, some of them on purpose, some of them just because I suck. But it, either way, th I think that making mistakes is a useful part of programming and correcting them, because I think I would say 90% of programming is debugging. Uh, so let's go ahead and script source in the... Uh, the three libraries, and hopefully we can get started here. Now, like I said, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have done this before, uh, and when I do that, I will, you know, I won't be editing this directly. Okay, so now what we want to do here is we want to create a place to put our map, and that's just a very simple 
uh, div tag, we'll just call it div id equals math. We will need to give it a size, and let me see if I can find out how you do that. Um, I think if you don't give it a size, it doesn't work, but I could actually be wrong about that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and move this script source up a little bit because we want to sort of keep our code clean. And we will need to be putting... Now, you, you could put all of this script stuff in, in the script.js. Um, I'm going to put it directly into the body of the HTML, partly because um, I want it sort of included after the div tag, which I could still do with script.js, but let's just... I'm going to keep, keep things easy, keep it right over here. So give me a second here while I, uh, while I look to see how I normally do this. And... Uh, let's see... Okay. And to give it... I'm going to give it... Uh, you can give it a style, which is what I'm going to do to make it... Um, if I remember correctly, I can't cut and paste from my machine. So this is going to... this is going to fail, probably. Actually, maybe I can. Nope. But I do have X clipboard running, so haha. -ha. Uh, I can paste it there. And then I can use Control V to paste it over here, and that's just going to give it a style of a uh, <sighs> little bit ugly here, but yeah, it's going to give it a style of 1600 by 900. That's actually going to be too big for our purposes, because we're going to be trying to look at it in the right pane and code it at the same time. You can go full screen on it. There is a little uh, out arrow here, and we will do that as well at some point. So let's well not eight pixels. Let's go to 800 pixels, 600 pixels. Okay, so now we have the div tag, so now we, the actual good stuff happens. We actually get to put the map in there. Um, and, boy, I wish I knew how to do that. No, I do know how to do that. Um, okay, and then... Let's see. Okay, come on. Um, okay... Okay, well, you know, maybe this is not I did not quite as good as this as I thought I was. Um, we're going to create a new open layers map. Um, actually, I could be wrong about that. We might need to create a new leaflet thing. So stand by while I pretend I know what I'm doing. And I actually have done this before. I mean, just... I, that doesn't mean I'm any good at it, but apparently I have done it before. Okay, uh, and a lot of this is much more fancy than what we're trying to do now, so it, it's sort of a question of, um, of doing too much here instead of too little. Um, wow. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so... To create the map, um, we're going to do not exactly what I'm about to paste in, but very close to it. Um, and so this is basically creates just a leaflet platform, a sort of just an empty blank tag. Um, and we will, but we won't make a simple projection. We're going to actually need the Mercator projection because we are using OpenStreetMaps, which has a Mercator projection. Okay, so we're just going to say var map equals l dot map. Give me one second here to test that I'm still streaming. I am. And let's see if anyone's actually watching now. Uh, no, nobody's watching, which is actually a good thing. Okay, so now we've created the map. Now, here we can actually test to see if actually we can't quite do this. So we now we need to set the map. Uh, we need to put the map into the div tag. Let's go ahead and call this. I'm going to change this to map div just so it, it does it wouldn't matter to javascript if we just called it map but to make things easier i'm going to call it the map div and i'm going to put the map on the map div and we can we will be able to see a blank map not very exciting but it will be the sort of um, first thing we can actually do with this so let's see how i do that i think it's just ma map add something wow um map fit bounds which is something we're going to do later. Um, map on. And let's see. Oh, 
Okay, wow, I suck at this. Um, okay, well, there is a way to do this. We need to add this map that we've created. It right now is not going to show up anymore. If we, we can actually run it and see that uh, hopefully nothing will happen because that's what we expect. And the console tells us map container not found. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I think maybe we can just do lmap div and let's see if that does things by magic. Um, wow, it does actually. So we do have a little bit of a leaflet map here. Um, looks terrible because we have no design on it. Let's go ahead and break it out into its own window and look at it. Um, yeah, we probably need to do something a little bit more than that to get it to look. But it is there now. So we do have a map there. Um, and I think we can make it look a little bit better by adding something to it, which I don't know what we're doing. Let's actually see if we can probably do this. Um, we need to add a little bit of deck. Oh, you know what? I, I know what I'm doing wrong. We need to include the style sheet uh, because that's what gives Leaflet a lot of its power. And I do not have the style sheet uh, loaded yet, but of course I can do that and I will do that now. Leaflet CSS. And I'll go ahead and put it in lib. I'll go ahead and upload it to lib. Um, let's see. Leaflet. Uh, CSS, and we're going to put it in lib. And now, of course, when you're including a, um, a CSS file, you don't include it with script source. You include it with something uh, link rel. Let's go ahead and uh, get this in there. So, and the one I'm using is actually a hacked version, so I'm not going to put it. I'm going to actually not use that right now. Um, and it's hacked just to make to fix one thing, but I don't think we'll need the hacked version. So we'll just do lib leaflet.css. And so now, if I've done everything correctly, we should there we go. We see a very nice sort of empty but still working uh, leaflet map. Um, so the next step, of course, is to add some something on this map that so it's not empty. And we're going to use the Open uh, Street Map tile servers to do that. So let's go ahead and s I f there's actually a really easy way of doing this, so this should not be too bad. Um, I think all you have to do is set tile map. Um, unfortunately, the way I'm doing it, because uh, I want to do other, I need to, in what I did earlier, I'm reprojecting stuff, so it looks really quite hideous. Um, the code looks pretty hideous, but the actual code to just put a map on here is not at all hideous. Um, let's see if we can find it. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's going to be in BC lib. It's going to be one of the place tiles on map sort of thing. So let's see. And it's going to be. Um, there's a lot of overhead here that we don't really need. Um, and I don't think it is um, image overlay. Image overlay would let us put like a uh, would like let us put like a uh, single image on it. But we actually want to use a dynamic image from Leaflet. So let's see if I can find it somewhere else. Um, let's see. Ah, oh yeah, it's L tile layer. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just do an L tile layer. Let's see if I can, is it, it is, it's camel case, so it's this. And the URL we're going to use is just basically the uh, the, the default um, open street map uh, layer, which is, and it's, it's got like a, a wild card in it, we're going to see. Oh, hello, Maddie, I didn't see you there. Thank you for joining. Let me go ahead and put that in chat. No, you can hear me, right? I'll ask you in chat just in case you can't. Because um, I've been babbling like crazy. And if none of this has been recorded, probably a good thing, but still. Um, okay, so what we're going to go ahead, go ahead and do here is we're going to add a tile layer. And we're going to add the tile layer, the default op OpenStreetMap tile layer, uh, which is 
this, and I think that's actually that needs to be um, an object. And let's see. No, it doesn't. So we can just do this right now. We're going to go. Um, we're just going to add this, and this should actually now give us uh, an open, uh, you know, an open street map view. Uh, but it does not. I think that's even the correct. Uh, so what am I doing? Oh, I'm sorry. This just creates the tile layer. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit ugly here. We create the tile layer, and then we do an add to map. So that we could do this. You know what? Actually, let's go ahead and do this separately, because I do want this to be instructional. So this is the tile layer. And now we're going to do something that I'm going to do a lot, which is I'm going to console log it to see what it looks like. It's going to be ugly, but it should be somewhat interesting to see what it is. So we look at the console, and we see this is a tile layer that just has some uh, some weird things in it, a subdomains A, B, and C. I didn't actually have that put in there, but apparently it knows that A, B, and C are the subdomains. Because um, you can put a, a B or a C in here instead of, um, instead of an A. Um, and I think it like randomly chooses that. So now that we have the tile layer, we're going to go ahead and add it to the map. And now if this works, we should actually have uh, nothing. Hang on, let's see if the console, so that's the... Okay, um, that's a little bit strange. And I think I know what might be wrong. Okay. So we can go ahead and make it full screen, which we can actually just do over here. Um, we have it, and we do not have the tile layer there. So let's see if we can figure out what went wrong. Um, it might be that we have a mixed... No, we shouldn't have a mixed content issue, because this is secure across the board. Um, so let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Or technically, let's see what I did before that worked. So L tile image, uh, tile layer, opacity, add to map. Uh, and you don't really need to set the opacity. I, we will do that later. Um, now, it's possible that um, the map is just at a really weird stage. So we do need to set the maps. We'll go ahead and set the maps view to be something somewhat somewhat useful and we will do that um, we can actually do that before we add the tile layer so let's go ahead and do that up here so we're gonna do something like um, I'll go ahead and make this um, uh, worst stream ever well no I've seen some pretty bad ones um, so we're gonna do this and so we're going to say map set view. Zero, zero is the equator where the equator and the prime meridian meet, and four is the zoom level. So hopefully this will take us to a, a reasonable view of a map uh, in, in Leaflet. And there we go. We have now successfully uh, created a map. And we can, let's look at it in large scale too, just because it's so nice. And so there it is. We have an 800 by 200, uh, 600 map of that we zoom around, we can zoom into, we can zoom out of, um, all sorts of cool things. So that was pretty simple. Um, now, you can add more than one tile layer to a map. And I'm going to add a tile layer that's really useful that I've created in Perl in a different way. Uh, we'll call it TL2. Let TL2 equal. By the way, I probably should be using let instead of var. Uh, but I'm not really that familiar with JavaScript, so if someone tells you var is better, use var. I'm just going to use let, though. Okay, so we're going to again have L tile layer, blah, 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 but in this case, we're going to be using uh, something I created, which is hopefully this. And we are going to have an issue with this in just a second, but that's intentional. Um, and this is the tile layer I created, and you'll see what it does in just a second here. Uh, so it's an L, it's a tile layer, this is a constructor. And we just put the URL in there, put a semicolon, and then we need to add this tile layer to the map, and it's, I think it's going to create a problem if, I, if I've done this correctly slash incorrectly. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, see what happens, see if it even works. And it's unhappy. Untermitted string literal. Really? Um, 
<laughs> oh, you know what? I think this has to be like that. That's more of a replit thing than a JavaScript thing. Okay, let's take a look. And there you have it. This is, uh, let's go ahead and break it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and over here. This actually tells you what tile you're looking at, the latitude and longitude limits of that tile, and so on. It's not particularly useful right now because it is covering up the main map. So we don't want that. What we do want to do here is we want to reduce its opacity. And so now we need to create a little bit of a tiny object here whose only, uh, whose only uh, variable is opacity. Now we're going to do this again. This time the opacity is going to be at one half. Let's see if that helps. Uh, and there we go. So now we have the map and we have an overlay that doesn't totally block the map. Um, so we can, so now we can, uh, we can sort of look around a little bit. Um, now what we want to do here is we want to try to put like a, a little guy um, sort of on the map. Now our guy is going to be a square, uh, but maybe later on he'll become an icon. But we want to put something on the map we can move around a little bit. Um, so let's just find, uh, I happen to, um, Albuquerque is my city, so I just usually I'm going to use, so we're going to set his latitude and longitude first. Um, Uh, let's call it guy longitude equals minus 106.5. And this is in degrees. And of course, remember, JavaScript works with radians. So if and when you, you know, we need to take functions of this, uh, we will need to use uh, radians. But for right now, we can use degrees. And I think this is actually pretty close to where I live, but not close enough to be dangerous. So, we're, so this is our guy. So now, how do we put a uh, how do we put an overlay on this map that is uh, not a tile layer? We've put two tile layers on here. Now we just want to put like a circle, maybe or a square, something like that. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and start using to dos to remind myself what to do. Um, make guy a man icon, or I guess a person icon to be non-sexist. So make guy a person icon. We will do that later. Right now, we just want to see if we can put something on this map. So. And the answer, of course, is yes, we can. Um, and let's see if I can remember how to do that. It, the leaflet is very much like um, is very much like the canvas. So a lot of the stuff you can do with canvas, you can also do with uh, you can also do with with leaflet. Um, okay. And if I can, f okay. Mm. Trying to find out where I've done this. Um, wow. Oh, man, not prepared. Okay, so I think all we have to do here is because L is the is the. Uh, I think we can do fill rect. And then just put the uh, however I think it wants a pair of coordinates. Um, so let's let's see how that's done. I'm looking at something you can't see, um, and it looks like it just wants four coordinates. Uh, sorry, it wants x coordinate, y coordinate, and then a height and a width, or actually I guess a width and a height in that order. So let's see if we do that. Now this is might not work because of the way this map is projected. And we're going to make our, our, our rectangle 5 by 5 so it'll be easily visible if it works. Let's run this. Um, and we can see here that it did not work. And we can look around a little bit to see where it is, but we're not going to find it. And this is because this map does not use uh, latitude and longitude coordinates. What does it use? Well. We can introspect. We don't actually have to go check, look at that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to console log the canvas, and s maybe that'll tell us the bounds. And we probably don't need to console log um, t the tile there anymore. And let's see if this tells us the bounds. If it doesn't, there's another way to check. But this actually might just give us the bounds. Okay, it doesn't seem to like that. L fill rect is not a function. Well, that it would explain why it didn't work. Um, but we will find that out in just a sec. Um, Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So actually, we will use the bound stuff. Plus, I guess L fill rect is not a um, 
is not a function, so it doesn't like that. So let's see if L rectangle is a function. If it isn't, I'm going to go ahead and Google to see what the function actually is. Um, T get southwest is not a function at T rectangle. Um, wow. Thank you. Hello, Harija. Uh, glad you're here. Hopefully this is instructive to someone. Probably not, but, you know, just in case. Um, so T southwest is not a function. Um, okay, that's, that's unusual. And I think this might be why I had to hack Leaflet. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Harija. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this is my first time actually doing something. I do have an older video that is just Monkey Island uh, playthrough, but this is the first time I'm actually doing a sort of a s longer live stream. Okay, so this is just weird. I think maybe I, I used the wrong function here. Um, so let's go ahead and Google, let's, let's, as everybody does. Leaflet uh, draw functions. Um, leaflet draw documentation. And actually, I think this might be the wrong thing. Um, draw a circle. Here we go. Draw a rectangle. So, draw a rectangle. Uh, so I'm lost. Um, let's see. I don't know if this is actually, this actually might be to draw the, um, this is actually the wrong API. This is to draw on like the, the, the sort of where you see the plus minus in leaflet there. Um, there is a way to draw on leaflet, and I think you just need to look for leaflet functions, and one of them is like set rectangle and so on and so forth. Um, and we'll look at the API reference for 0.7, it's very similar. For, here we are. So here we have like, you know, stuff you can do with the map, stuff you can do with the map methods, uh, and somewhere over here there is a uh, raster layer, uh, utility, Event marker. We have markers. We have pop-ups. I think we can use a marker here. Um, circle. Let's go ahead and put a circle on there. So this is how you draw a circle. Just circle, latitude, longitude, and radius. Um, but it's not going to work. I mean, I'm almost sure it's not going to work uh, because we our projection is really weird here. I think we're using a Mercator projection. So here, let's go ahead and put our, our circle at 0, 0. The, the, um, we're going to put it at five degrees, but I think it's going to interpret this as five meters. So, um, let's just see what happens. And this is a lot of what I do is, you know, basically throw it into the mix, see what happens. Not good if you're in a production system, just fine if you're, if you're coding. Okay, let's see what the result looks like. It's over here. Nope. Where'd I go? Over here to the full screen version. Reload, which we don't actually need to do. And... As you can see, nothing. Oh, actually, hang on, there is something there. There's a little blue circle here, but I think it is actually just going to be five meters. Um, so, in other words, it's not going to be. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. The fact that it shows up at higher zoom levels is actually probably a mistake. Um, and honestly, I'm getting sick of zooming in this far, and it's five meters is going to take forever to zoom into. So, what, and it's actually, in, oh, wow, well, maybe not. Okay. So now we're at zoom level 18. Um, and you can see a little circle there. So now let's see if we can move the circle to our latitude and longitude. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger because this is just really too small. So we're going to move it to our guy's longitude. And I'm pretty sure it's uh, x, y, which is longitude, latitude. And that is something, unfortunately, that people are not consistent about, but I think Leaflet actually does it x, y. And we're going to make our, um, uh, let's see, make it 500. It's about a uh, quarter of a mile-ish, 0.3 miles. Uh, let's run it. Actually, we don't we shouldn't have done that. We should just reload it here. And we, of course, don't really want the map centered over there. We want the map centered closer to where we are. Um, but for right now, this is fine. And where to go? 
and it's it's gone. Oh no, hang on, hang on. Is it there? Nope, that's just a building. Okay, so that didn't work. So let's figure out why. First of all, um, circle is yeah, that is x y. Okay. So what happened? Well, let's find out the easier way. Let's go ahead and put it back to zero zero, something we know is working. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and download this file as a zip, uh, because every time I get something that's sort of working, I want to just download it as a um, uh, download it as a zip, so we can get it back if we need to. I'm hoping not to make too many mistakes, but you never know. Um, so let's go ahead and do this now and see if we can get a, uh, like a half a kilometer circle, which is going to look a lot better. And there we go. There we have a nice half kilometer circle. So what happened when we uh, when we moved it? Why didn't it move? And I think I know the reason. Uh, zero, zero is a very special point, so it's sort of always in the middle. Now let's try moving it to, let's say, let's try moving it to, let's say, uh, you know, a longitude of minus 10. And I think what's going to happen is it's going to move to the left, but by very little. So let's go ahead and reload. Um, where'd it go? And, oh, there it is. Oh, wow, so there's two things sort of weird with it. If you look at the... Um, Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. But you'll notice now it's actually um, it's actually the south of where I wanted it, uh, not. And in fact, if you look at it, the latitude. Whoa. The latitude here is about minus ten. So apparently, I totally screwed that up. And this is latitude comma lunch. I'm going to make a note of this because it's really not consistent. So L circle is latitude, longitude, and actually I'm just going to abbreviate them as that long. Okay, so now we now we know what we did wrong, so we can go ahead and set the latitude to the guy's latitude, and the longitude to the guy's longitude. Let's go ahead and run this. And again, we're not centered where we need to be, but that's okay for right now. And yay, we have a nice dot we can zoom in on, which should be right in the middle of, or sort of in the middle of Albuquerque. New Mexico where I live. And yes, it, it is where I think it should be. Okay, fantastic. So now we've got our little guy. And I think... Yeah. So now we actually sort of want to move the guy around a little bit. Uh, this is very static. Uh, so we want to add like a... Normally I would... Um, normally I would bind movement to the arrow keys. But I know a lot of people are using um, mobile devices. So I'm actually going to create some buttons and I'm going to make it so that the buttons can move our little guy around. And at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and remove this overlay because we really don't need it anymore. And we might need it again, so I'm going to just comment it out. So let's go ahead and not... We'll keep the tile layer, but we're just not going to add it to the map. Um, and so now we're going to create some buttons, and this is just very simple here. Uh, this is just plain HTML. And I'm going to try to see how I did it before because I actually got some uh, cool stuff going on. Uh, is it? Did I actually say input type button? Hang on, that would be weird. Okay. Where the heck am I? Unfortunately, I've got this spread over two gits, so I sometimes have trouble finding out what I'm doing. Ah. Uh. Yeah, here it is. Um, and maybe I'll show you guys what this looks like at some point, because it is a lot fancier than um, than what we're doing here. Uh, and so you could sort of see what the finished product might look like, not 100%. Um, so we're going to create... Let's see. For right now, we're just going to create a um, four buttons to make it directional. That's not what I meant to do. Actually, maybe it is. So let's see what that is. So we have... That's a little bit of extra stuff there, but... So we have the buttons. Um, let's go ahead and put them... Uh, it does, since we're using the script tag directly in HTML, we don't have to create the buttons before we, before we script source. If the buttons were used inside of the scripts, we would. But, but they're not, so it's not an issue. So this should create four buttons. It won't actually do any. They won't do anything. Uh, let's see. And they're really ugly. Good, 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 good. Of course, the buttons aren't going to do anything right now because we haven't bound them to anything. 
So how do we bound now? How do we bound them to something? How do we make it so that when the buttons are pressed, something actually happens? I'm actually asking. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I do know. Um, and let's take a look here. Where did I do this? Um, now, in theory, I could put a button listener uh, right in the buttons, and I might actually end up doing that. Um, but you can actually do it some other way as well, because all the buttons are, um, they have the same, they're all buttons, and so they have the same type. So you should be able to, um, should be able to do this without, uh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. And so let's see here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just cut and paste some more code here. And I was actually wrong. You do have to select the buttons individually, but we can do it in sort of a little bit of a for loop here because um, because they're all button tags. They're all button elements. So here's the code I had before, and it works just as well, just as fine now. So what we do here is we say the buttons are going to be all the buttons in the, in the, in the document. And here, we're going to clean this up a little bit. Um, buttons is now an array. In fact, to be instructional, why don't we actually look at what the button array is? So, and we'll go ahead and not look at L anymore. So let's go ahead and run this and see what the button array is. Uh, view controller is not defined. That's okay. We, we, we're going to create a function called view controller not defined yet. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it's an array of four buttons. Uh, if we wanted to, we could even look, let's, for instructional purposes, look at one of the buttons and see what it looks like. It's probably going to be not very interesting. Yeah, so that's, we're not going to go any further into that, but yes, we have the buttons. Now, what we have to do here is add a listener. So basically, we say when the button, and the, we're adding a button click listener. We could add a different kinds of listeners, but for right now, when we want the buttons clicked, we want to know, and we want to call the function called view controller, um, which we haven't written yet. But now we'll go ahead and write it, and we don't have to write it before we write uh, the, you know, where we bound it, I don't think. Uh, let me see if I want to cut and paste my old view controller. It's actually pretty long, and it might not be instructional if I, paint, if I cut and paste the whole thing. Uh, but let me see if I want to cut and paste part of it. Mm. Yeah, let's cut and paste part of this. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut and paste part of this um, right here. And, it's, wow, there's like three other people watching it. Um, but I think one of them might be a uh, bot, or two of them might, they might all be bots, I don't know. Okay, so the view controller function Anytime you do a bound, anytime you bind something to a function, like view controller, the function will receive one argument, which is the event. Uh, in other words, it's what happened. And we're cheating a little bit here. The thing we're going to be interested in is the ID of the event that's, of the target of the events that, that's received. That's a little bit advanced, so why don't we actually do a console log on the event itself. Um, so we, we're going to run this. And let's actually not log the buttons anymore. Um, and so now, you know, nothing happened because, of course, this will only be called when we actually click one of the buttons. So let's do that. And now let's see what happens. So mouse event is trusted getter. So that's not really very... That's a mouse event? I guess clicking a button is a mouse event. Um, not very descriptive. So now we're going to do something a little bit special here. Um, in addition to using console log, you can do a little bit more. You can do, let me see if I can find my function here. Um, I created a var dump function. And what this does, is, and I copied it from somewhere, I think. All this does is it goes through all of the, uh, of the uh, you know, variables in an object and prints them out. This usually works a little bit better than just dumping the whole object. So this is the code. It is, again, available publicly. Um, 
And of course, you can always come to the REPL and cut and paste this code for yourself. Not a problem. Um, so let's go ahead and var dump instead of just uh, instead of just console logging e. Let's go ahead and var dump it. Um, and I think this is going to work a little bit better. So we run. Oh well, and of course we could match our parentheses. So we run. And again, nothing's going on there because we do need to, of course, uh, click on the button. And now you can see we get a lot more information about this button. And this is, again, a, a really good um, debugging technique. Uh, so I, I don't need it, obviously, because I happen to know I'm going to need the uh, event ID. But here you can see a lot of stuff about the button. Um, and one of the things you should be able to see, uh, target. Now, you probably wouldn't know to use that if you, just, if you were just doing this for the first time. Um, but it turns out the target's what we actually want. That's tells you uh, what which HTML item has been hit. So let's go ahead and look at the target here. Let's go ahead and bar up the target. And um, let's run. Result north blah. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the target event. And there's actually two ways we could get to it. We're going to get to it by sort of the more programmy way. Um, we can get to it by its ID, which is north. Jesus. Um, by its ID, which is north, if I can find it. No type button name. Okay, where is it? Now let's use the find commands for right. <laughs> oh man. Okay, ID north. Or we could, we're not going to, but we could see where inner text is N, and I think also context menu is also. Um, first child is a. There's another text content is N. So we could use the text content, which is the actual letter N inside the button, but we're going to be a little bit more programmy and use the IDs we've assigned since we sort of assigned them for that reason. Okay, oops, that's not what I meant to do. So let's go ahead and uh, and now so we're going to use the event e target id which we sort of cheated on by uh, because I cut and paste that code. So now what do we need to do with this id? Well, the id is going to be one of four things. It's going to be either and we can look up here at our buttons. It's going to be either north, south, east, or west because those are the four ids we have. Um, and here we're just going to we could do a case then, but I hate case uh, case statements. We're just going to do a, an if statement here, and this is again I can copy this from what I had before, because um, let's see, uh, this code is actually not going to work as is because we're using different variables, but. Um, so basically, if the you know we want to basically if, if the string is west, we move the guy west. Uh, but we we don't have a view here. We actually need to move the guy's um, guy's longitude to the west. And we probably don't want to move him a whole degree west. That's a little bit excessive. Just for testing purposes, we'll say. I think I think JavaScript supports this. Uh, we'll move him. Yeah, you know, let's go ahead and move them now. Uh, move them a hundredth of a degree to the west. It's actually still quite a bit. One degree of latitude is one sixty nautical miles, which is about seventy miles. So, point zero one is about seven tenths of a mile. So it is still a pretty big move. But um, and let's be really nice here and say move amount equals zero point zero one. So I don't have to type it every time. And so it's going to be move amount. If he's going east, we add that to his east is higher lo longitudes. Uh, okay. Now we probably really don't want to be using the same move amount from north, south, east, west because longitude, the length of a long, you know, going from one longitude to another, changes depending on what your latitude is. But for right now, it's not a big deal. Um, so let's go do this. And guy lat minus equals move mount. So this is not going to work, but let's just see what it. Let's see why it's not going to work. 
Uh, let's go ahead and run it. Um, so to see that it doesn't work, we're going to go full screen on this. And I'm getting sick enough of this that I might actually change the center of this map at some point. Um, and we're going to have to zoom in quite a bit to see. So this guy, it's not going to work, so let's just see why it does and how it doesn't work. So we're going to move the guy north, 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 nothing's happening. Why? Because, of course, we don't redraw him after we change the, his location. So JavaScript in an infinite loop, but we've only asked it to draw the guy once. And that is over here where we say add circle. We don't change that. Uh, well, we create the circle, we add it. So now we need to create, uh, what we need to do is here is every time someone clicks a button, we need to redraw the map. Uh, well, redraw the, the, uh, the circle. And we can do that. And let me see if I can find some code I had earlier that's not too, um, that's not uh, too bad. Um, and let's see, update view. And we're going to be really simplistic about this. Um, I think. Um, yeah, I think we can be very simplistic about this. You can, you can make you know, an update view pretty fancy. So the first thing we is we remember to call update view. So we don't forget to actually call it. And then we need to define it. And for right now, it's going to take no parameters, but we're actually going to want parameters in the future. Right now, of course, it's just going to update the view because it's very simplistic. So now what we want to do is we want to take the, um, the circle that we had that we created. We can't move it around the way it is now because we haven't assigned it a name. Uh, we, haven't given it a, uh, a, a, uh, we haven't assigned it to a variable. Um, so what we probably should do, should have known in the first place, var circle equals this guy, and then we can move him around a little bit once we've once we've actually okay, and then circle add to map. Now JavaScript programmers do like to sort of do a lot of functions at once using the dot notation, but we're learning, so we're going to do it this way. So this should still add the circle to the map, and now what we can do here is um, we can change the center of the circle, but how do we do that? Well, let's look at the circle when we get here. Now, notice we're using circle as a global variable because it is defined globally. Um, if you were being a little bit more careful, you might just have passed the circle around as a parameter. But for right now, we're fine doing this. So let's run what we're doing here. Let's click north and see what the console tells us. And this is the circle. It's got a lot of stuff going on here. It's got a lot of... Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, the Latin long is, um, I think we can edit that directly. No, I don't think we can actually. We need a function called like move center or change center. So let's see if we can find a, uh, a, a move center. Move end, move end index, move end blah, blah, blah. Okay. We'll look for the word center because it is, it is how you change the, uh, the, there is a method here that lets you change the center. Apparently there's not a method here. Let's change the center. I was pretty sure there was. Um, you can also just get rid of this circle, create a new one. That's just hideous, though. Uh, let's just look at... Okay, huh. Center, 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 center. It might be just the X and Y coordinates. Let's, let's look for X colon, uh, which is going to catch a lot of other stuff. It's SVG <laughs> point. Usually the variables that have underscores, we really don't want to be changing. That's, that's sort of internal variables. It's a general rule. Um, okay, so we know that the uh, guys... Um, why don't we look for... This is cheating. We know that something in him is minus 106.5 because we assigned it. So why don't we look for minus 106.5 and see where we find it. Okay, that's in a um, underscore variable. We probably don't want to touch that. But that's the only place it shows up. So apparently I am wrong, and you cannot, um, you cannot change the center of the circle. Um, I'm pretty sure you actually can. Let me see how I do it, though. I, I might end up just, I might have ended up destroying the object and creating a new object, which is horrible. Um, 
and I think I know how I'm doing it. Okay, actually, um, okay, huh. Okay, well, a couple of things. It turns out in the original I used a rectangle, and the rectangle you can change set bounds. Uh, so you can change the, where the rectangle is and how big it is if you want. So let me go ahead and go a little bit back, uh, and instead of using circles, which are pretty cool, but you know, uh, let's go ahead and try to use a rectangle, and I'm going to see what the functionality is for that. And it is something, it is like L rectangle, but it's spelled weird. Um, maybe not, maybe I'm just remembering wrong. But let's see what it is. Okay. <laughs> and again, the code I'm looking at is not secret. It, it is in my GitHub. But um, I'm, I don't want to copy the whole thing in here because we are sort of trying to learn. <sighs> oh, wow. Am I actually doing this? Oh, ouch. It appears that I might have used a Google Maps rectangle, which you can do. You can use Google Maps rectangles with Leaflet. Um, but that's a terrible decision on my part. Um, there should be a way to create a rectangle uh, just using Java, just using Leaflet itself. So let's go ahead and look at this. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and look up here. Um, path, polyline, circle, rectangle. Here we go. This is, this is what we this. Um, so, yeah, this is, so let's go ahead and use a rectangle. And in this case, I'm pretty sure we can change bounds. There's a, we can just either, and that, that should change the actual, the actual position. So, L rectangle, bar bounds, of course, are, in this case, I'm almost sure it's going to be, okay, let's see. Um, now notice the bounds here are not uh, center in size. They are top left corner, bottom right corner. So we do need to make a little bit of a change here. The top left corner. Um, let's give our guy a size. This is a, I'm overdoing the programming ishness here. Let's give him a size of 0 0.1 degrees, which is way too big. But again, this is just for testing. So that's going to be the center of the rectangle. So the top left corner is going to be guy's longitude minus the guy size over 2, and guy latitude minus guy size over 2. And I will break this out. That's the top. That's the top, latitude, top left. Bottom right corner is just going to be the same thing except with addition instead of subtraction. So, and we're not going to actually care about a color for right now. Um, and I'm missing, I need to put the, the point in brackets itself. So it's going to be this, and then very simply, guy longitude plus guy size over 2. And guy latitude plus guy size. This is going to be huge. Um, and we're not going to bother with a, uh, a style. We're just going to add it to the map as is. We will style later on, but for right now, and I did that totally wrong. It is, of course, add to, and the thing we're adding it to is a map. And actually, we can't do that because we need the rectangle as its own object. So here's the rectangle, var rect, and then add to map. And now that we don't need the circle, I don't think we're going to come back to the circles of match. You're going to go ahead and delete that code. Um, and here, we will probably need to um, update view, console log, rect. That's going to be the thing we're going to be changing circle is gone. So now let's see if, um, well, let's just see if the rectangle is working. So something went very wrong. Let's find out what it is. Um, I'm going to pretend nothing bad happened and just reload. Uh, okay, we lost our everything. Not good. And the console doesn't even seem to be giving us an error unless there's the very bottom or something. No, no error. Um, it is probably logging the rectangle where it shouldn't be because I didn't really ask, I didn't do anything. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. We are adding the um, rectangle. Oh, that's the problem. It's not even syntactically correct. So let's run this. 
Okay, you back. Um, do we have a? No, where did our rectangle go? Oh, that's the airport. Okay, we've lost our rectangle. So, um, let's see. What are we doing wrong here? Um, and I do have my plus and minus is correct. So, good debugging technique here. Um, I'm going to set it to one that we know works, which is the zero, zero. Well, we can't really, I mean, we'll move it a little bit around zero, zero. So we want the rectangle, let's say, from going from minus one, minus one to one, one. Um, very simple. We've redefined it. That's fine. You can redefine variables. Run. Um, now it's really unhappy. So why is that? Uh, is it because I can't redefine? Correct. Um, do I not have a... Oh. Yes. This whole thing has to be in brackets, too. Fun, fun. Yeah. This uh, replit does a little bit of auto-filling in for you with brackets, which is sometimes useful, but often not. So, reload. And there it is. That's our beautiful rectangle now because we the problem had nothing to do with position we can go ahead and do it the way we wanted reload and let's see if our rectangle is in the right position now uh, no it's not so where the hell did it go hmm Huh. Anyone's got any ideas? You can get on the Zoom. If that Zoom is the Zoom still going? No, it's not. Um, well, you can get on the Twitch and chat, and if you need to get on the Zoom, I'll, I'll let you in. Um, let's see. So the bottle that da 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 add to map, and it's not showing up where it's supposed to. Not cool. Um. So, again, now this is going to go back to, like, introspection. So we're going to go back to our little test rectangle. And, you know, I think when I did this, I didn't check to see how big it is, but I don't think it was one degree by one degree. So that is sort of a, um, sort of a, uh, a weirdness. So let's take a look here. Let's see if that actually is one degree by one degree. It might not be. And in order to do that, I probably will need to put my... Uh, it actually might be one degree by one degree. But we don't know, so we're going to put our little tile layer 2 on there, which gives us the latitudes and longitudes. Um, and if it is, we'll just try moving it in a little bit to see what happens when we move it around. Uh, and then at some point we will... Okay. Yay, overlay! So right now we're at a 22, so let's, let's get it to where it's like almost as big as one of these squares. Okay, so it actually does look like uh, the latitude here is, it is one degree by one degree. So what are we doing wrong? Well, introspection. It's possible that I've defined these variables incorrectly. So, instead of using the variables, I'm going to just try doing this. I'm going to try going from uh, longitude minus 106.5, latitude 35, to minus... Remember, it's minus, so the, this number has to be higher. So this is a huge rectangle that I'm creating just to see if the problem is with the positioning or the problem is with uh, the variables that I have here have possibly not been defined correctly or I mistyped them or something. So let's run this. Let's do this. Okay, not looking too good here because it would be a huge rectangle. Um... And I'm not seeing it. Okay, so what is wrong here? We wow, shiny. Um, so what's wrong here? Um, I 
<laughs> ah, okay, I think I know what it might be. Well, hang on. So if minus one, one, okay, so why... So why is this not working? Well, actually, we don't know that it's x, y. It might be y, x, because what I tested with was you know, symmetric variables. If it is, um, I'm going to be very disappointed if this works. Because, again, <laughs> rectangles, you're really supposed to go x, y. However, this might be the issue. And, um, yep, looks like we're already seeing a rectangle. Now, you'll notice the rectangle, even though I, I sort of made it square, uh, it's not square because latitudes and longitudes are not of the same length on Earth. Uh, so basically, the the uh, one degree in... in uh, actually, I didn't make them the same size, so never mind. But even if I did, th this would be different. Okay, so now we have figured out that problem. Let's go ahead and put it back to over here. And we're just going to switch lat and long and be very sad about uh, Replit's decision to make this. Uh, and we're going to make a comment on that too. Okay. Um, so now let's see if this is doing what we want. And it should be. And I'll leave the overlay on here for just a second. I'll take it off in a bit. All right, let's see if this is our zoom, damn it, zoom. Okay, and it looks like our guy is kind of where he needs to be. Um, he looks surprisingly square. He's not, but he looks surprisingly square. And uh, by the way, uh, my rectangle doesn't have a gender. I just use the male pronouns like we did back in my day. Um, so we've added into the map. Now, of course, our question is, can we move him? What can we do? And it's going to be set bounds is going to be the command. But let's go ahead and run this and press on a button so we get some console output. So this is the, all the stuff about the rectangle because we're console logging it. We don't need the var dump here. It's, it would be overkill. And all this good stuff here, um, we don't really want to change the bounds directly, but we can use the set bounds command. Uh, actually, can we? Bounds. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Bounds, bounds, bounds. PX bounds. Okay. Well, that's not helpful. Okay, I guess you might just, in this case, actually have to know uh, about the set bounds command. Uh, and of course, you know, you can actually go back here and look at the documentation. Um, rectangle bounds, bar bounds creation and here are the method set bounds is a method so redraws the rectangle with the past bounds so do that um, circle I guess does not and we'll look double check but here um, oh we could have done a set lat long so I was wrong we could have kept using the circle and we could have just changed its latitude and longitude um, so now I'm sort of torn uh, circle sort of looks nicer but, well, eventually we're going to go with an icon. And so we're, we're, let's go ahead and use a rectangle for now, since we're not going to end up using circle either. Eventually we can just use a, uh, a rectangle. Um, sorry, uh, an icon. So we might as well use a rectangle for now. And so, update view. Now we've already changed the guy's longitude and latitude in the uh, view controller function. So all we need to do basically is do a rect set bounds of exactly this thing again. Uh, the guy size will remain the same. So this is not tremendously interesting. If it works, if it doesn't work, it'll be interesting. Um, rect set bounds. And um, Repla does have some function completion, but not a great deal. I mean, it doesn't really work that well, so. Okay. So now if this works, and I don't know, and I think because JavaScript has its own loop, I don't need to call a redraw function. This just actually literally will move the rectangle, if it works, which is kind of redundant, I guess. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We, it's a pretty big move we're actually making, so it's not going to be that hard to see, but 
that. Eventually, we are going to define the size for our for our guy. Okay, so now, can we move him north? No. And why not? Well, apparently, oh, console doesn't complain. Apparently, however, it's unhappy. Oh, it's just unhappy because we're permission so it's secure. That's fine. Um. So rect set bound. Um. Get bounds should be a function. I don't. I don't know if it actually is. Let's see if we actually change the rectangles boundaries when we click that button. Click north. Um. Have I made the same mistake I made before, which is not putting this in brackets? Yes, I have. So now I've probably fixed the problem. So this debugging step isn't going to help us any. In fact, let's go wild and actually just do it. And at some point I will need to move the center of the map so it is where we're starting at. We can just use guy lat guy long because we created the threads for that purpose. And maybe change the zoom level because it's really too too low for what we're doing. Okay, now can we move this guy north? Yay! Our guy can move north. He can move south. He can move east. And he can move west. No, don't go to the west side, because that's the joke only Albuquerque people will get. Okay. Awesome. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save this, because this is an important uh, checkpoint step. Download a zip. Um, now, let's go and clean this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, the overlay that I created, the T2 overlay. Um, I guess I called it TL2. Uh, we'll still let it be created, but we won't add it to the map. Second of all, let's uh, go ahead and uh, center our map. Uh, which, by the way, our map name is... Uh, is it map? Oh, yeah, because I set it to map. Um, okay. So... Um, and now that I realize they're just going to be annoying about using lat long, we're going to do it this way. I don't think that'll work, but let's see what happens. Reload. Nope, that didn't work. Um, might be set view, but why don't we actually go ahead and use the directions? Uh, map is, of course, the the main thing that they have. So this is, um, this, this, so the options. This is all what you can do with it. Interaction options. Double click. These are all the things you can listen to on the map, which we're not doing right now. We're looking for, okay, we're looking for methods. Uh, method set view is what we want, actually. Um, by the way, you might notice here that uh, it actually wants a lat long object, but it turns out leaflet's nice enough that if you give it a, a bracketed list, list of, you know, list of two elements that are each lists, it will go ahead and do that. Or in this case, sorry, just a list of two elements. It will go ahead and treat that as a lat long object. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I think there's even one that lets us set the view and the zoom at the same time, but we're not going to bother with that for right now. Okay, I think we've been up for one hour, if you're keeping track of time, which I apparently am not. I just happen to know that. Okay, so we're going to do map set view. We'll test that first. That should work. And then we'll go ahead and set the zoom level to be a little bit higher, because that's what we want. And I just made a mistake. I should have done this as guy lat, because we are obviously not don't want to use hard-coded variables although for testing it would have been okay so reload and viola or voila depending on how you pronounce it uh, it did center correctly so now what sort of zoom level do we want I think um, we're gonna use zoom level I think I mean I could put the overlay back on and check but I think 13 is gonna be the zoom level we want so we will say map set then we can always fix that if that's not correct and that is being hard-coded right now um, and I'm unhappy about that as I said it, so I'm just going to actually make a variable for it. And again, we use variables to make things more flexible. We don't have to go in and change the hard-coded values. So let's see what this does. And now our guy should be right in the center, and there he is beautifully at the southeast corner of Albuquerque. Uh, and he is, if we move him, and luckily I think we set his, we set his move size to exactly his, uh, his guy size. So he moves around by one of his own body lengths. 
to the extent that he is a guy. Okay, let's move him over here. Okay, awesome. Um, so we've created a map. We've created a guy. We can move the guy around. Now, the next step is going to be sort of seem very different, but it's actually not very different. We here can tell... Let's move the guy a little bit north to... I sort of put him in the southeast corner of the city. And west. Um, so we, as users... And by the way, this guy is huge at the, at the moment. He, you can see he takes up many streets. So we, as users, can tell that these are streets, because uh, we can see that. Uh, we can tell that uh, these are houses. We're not going to look at the houses. But we are going to look at... Um, uh, let's move the guy east. Um... Okay, that's not what I wanted. Somewhere, okay, here we go. So here we know this is a Panda Express. So I know it's a Panda Express because I've been there. Uh, OpenStreetMap knows it's a Panda Express. But the computer really doesn't know this. So the computer, this map is a bunch of pixels. So the question is, how can we get information that a computer can read so we could tell the user uh, you are currently, well, overlapping Panda Express? or whatever the hell this... Is that French Mortuary? I guess so. Chevron, whatever. How do we do that? And that information does not come from uh, the tile maps, because the tile maps um, tile maps are just images. They're just pixels. They don't have any meaning behind them. The place we can get information is called Overpass. And we're going to sort of do a little separate thing here, because this is actually fairly interesting how we get URLs and deal with them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do something that is very silly. There is no die command in JavaScript. Um, however, if JavaScript hits a command it doesn't understand, it will stop. So it's just going to say die is not defined. This is not a real die command, um, but it is a fake command. So we uh, so we end up uh, getting. Um, so we end up stopping the program. And I want to do that because I'm going to focus now on how to get a uh, data from an, uh, from an API. And this is not complicated, but, but more complicated than you might think it is. Uh, so let me see if I can cut and paste some code from what I had earlier, but not too much. And if I remember... Wow, I have like no idea where the hell all my stuff is. <laughs> um, and I will, come on, okay, I'm using a command to find out where, which of my files have the word overpass in it, uh, and the answer is none of them, oh wow, that actually is the answer. Um, hang on. And if I can't find it here, I do, I do actually know how to use the overpass. I have it in some other place. I'm hoping to use it where I used it in code, so it's a little bit easier, makes more sense. But clearly that's not going to happen. Now, well, let's give it a couple more seconds here to finish searching. Um, yeah, there's a lot of JavaScript. It's searching through JavaScript. You can't see the command. Uh, it is searching through a lot of JavaScript files, um, some of which I didn't install, some of which are just from the libraries. Uh, I was hoping to find uh, one from one that I had created. Um, by the way, if you do go to my the REPL page I'm on, you can look at my other um, other REPLs. And actually, I think one of them will have the, the leaflet stuff. So I might cheat and look at my, my own REPLs. So let's go over here. Um, so Twitch OSM leaflet, of course, is where we are. And for some reason, I think it's in pages, because th this is actually how the, uh, the pages are set up. Um, Sorry, this is how my pages.github.io is set up. So there's the map fit bounds. Let's see if we can find overpass in here. Yeah, here we go. Build a URL for the overpass IP API. Um, 
And there it is. Um, the weird thing is the overpass API actually uses latitudes and longitudes. Well, it's not weird, but it's different. OpenStreetMap uh, uses tiles for its tiling. It uses X, Y, and Z coordinates uh, that have nothing to do with latitude. And, well, I mean, they're related to latitude and longitude, but they're just sort of weird. Um, they're not really, it's sort of, there's a formula to convert between them, but it is not standard latitude and longitude. So I like this line here, we're just going to cut and paste this. Can we cut and paste this? I guess we can. Um, and this is overpass API DE. This is their, this is a public, uh, they don't object to you using it, um, at, you know, up to a point. So what we need to do now is put in the, um, and again, not only does this use the, uh, not only does this use <laughs> uh, latitude, longitude, order, it actually does the uh, bottom right, the lower latitude first. Actually, no, never mind, that's correct. Um, and so the top left. Okay, so this, of course, these variables aren't defined. This came from something else. But let's go ahead and define um, the area for which we want information. Um, and we will call, and it's, we're going to make a rectangle out of it. Now, if you look at this code here, this this looks fairly innocuous, the semicolon less than semicolon. Uh, and I'm not going to explain how the uh, overpass API works. Uh, there are instructions for it um, online. Um, but I will say that this is the correct thing we need. The out JSON just means we're going to get it in JSON format. We're using JavaScript. JSON is a good format for that. This less than and equal to actually includes all the information we need because uh, we're using, we're asking for nodes. now. OpenStreetMap has nodes, uh, paths, or ways, they call them, and polygons, which are also ways, uh, and relations. Um, would relations tell you about a relation between two or more, uh, between two objects? Um, so getting node would not be sufficient, we, because that would just give us nodes, it wouldn't be very interesting. Um, but it turns out doing the semicolon less than semicolon, making some, uh, you know, less than a separate command, this actually will get us the nodes, uh, ways, and relations we need. Uh, so if you're ever doing this, that, that's a little bit of a bugaboo. It took me a little bit of time to figure that out, but suffice it to say, this is the correct, uh, this is the correct, uh, data. This is the correct URL. Now, let me see if I can cheat a bit here. Um, I think our guy is small enough that we can just get information on, he's, he's so big, he's big enough that there's some decent information here in this big square. And he's small enough that we we're not going to overload. Uh, you can't really ask overpass for too much data because there's a lot of data in here. And if you asked for a larger area, it would be slower. And at some point, it would just time out and not give it to us. Plus, we don't actually want to be mean to the uh, overpass API. So we're not going to be requesting too large a piece of data. But this looks like a pretty decent piece of data to, to request. So um, I'm going to define some more. Ver oh, have I actually made a mistake here? Yes, because. I define the guy's longitude and latitude. Let's go ahead and define all this stuff um, earlier up here because we want to use it. And instead of being um, instead of being obnoxious and using uh, guy long minus guy size over two, we're going to go ahead and define some variables for this. Um, and I'm going to be really lazy and just say br lat for bottom right latitude. And that's, of course, the guy's latitude plus the guy's size over 2. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to mimic these variable names. The top left, longitude, geez, is the guy's longitude, which is the lower of the two longitudes, guy size over 2. Uh, and then the top left latitude is the guy's latitude minus the size. Am I right about No, I'm not right about that. Sorry. Uh bottom right latitude is lower because uh, latitudes are upside down. So higher latitudes mean up, lower latitudes mean down. So they've got this backwards. So fix that. Um, and then bottom right longitude is, uh, and longitudes are in the correct order, the increase is y increases. Um, let's do this. And now, 
I shouldn't need the dollar sign notation because I'm actually just using a simple variable. If you're using an object, then you do need, and you want to use one of the methods or one of the variables in the object, you do need the dollar sign notation. But I don't think I do need that here. So we're just going to... And, and this is actually going to be... Um, the interesting part of this is how, it act how JavaScript actually deals with... Oh, crap. What did I have here? Top left latitude. Yeah, I should probably be paying attention while I'm doing this, huh? Bottom right longitude. Okay. So that's our URL. We're not doing anything with it. But let's see, just to make sure that it looks sort of decent, let's go ahead and console log it and run the program. Now, again, we're not going to be doing anything with the map for a while now. So run. Map. I don't even know. Oh, oh, oh. Guy size is not defined. No, it is not defined because I don't know how to capitalize. Now it's defined. Uh, die is not, that, which is fine. Okay, so, oh, that did not work. So I'm wrong. We do need the dollar signs, even if it's a simple variable. So this is the uh, sort of interpolation. One type of interpolation in JavaScript uh, is to use the dollar signs. And by the way, just because it's not really obvious from what we're looking at, these are not regular quotes. These are backticks. So if you're going to interpolate like this, you do need to use back. You cannot use regular quotation marks. You need to use backticks. Let's see if that helped any. Um, yeah, this is a floating point error, but that's fine. This looks good. Okay. Now comes the actual interesting part, which is how do we get data from a URL? Now JavaScript is asynchronous, which means, um, which sounds, it's actually a good thing, uh, but that means that it doesn't do things right when you ask it to. It basically schedules to do things and gives them back to you later. Uh, the problem with that is if you want to get data from a URL, most programming languages that are non that are synchronous, uh, the program basically waits until you get the data from the URL and then you can continue and have that data. In JavaScript, that does not happen. In JavaScript, when you tell it to get a, uh, get a URL's data, it starts to get it, but then it returns control to the program so the program can do other stuff. That is actually a good thing because network access is fairly slow and actually having the computer hold and wait for JavaScript, uh, wait for a network access is a bad thing, even though everyone does it. So this is actually a good thing that JavaScript does, but it's going to be confusing. So the way we fetch a URL is going to be URL fetch, but it's not going to work. And I'm going to use a bunch of temporary variables um, because we're eventually going to combine these. So we're going to let t0 equal URL fetch. So what does it actually return? It's, uh, I know what it is, but let's see what this actually returns when you get a URL fetch. Um, URL fetch, well, that's a problem. Uh, what am I trying to do? Oh, I, yeah, sorry. URL is just a string right now. I wanted it to be a URL. I think it's actually... So we're using URL. Now, this is the object URL. We're using the fetch method, and we are calling it on... URL, which is a terrible... Uh, I think we'll leave it that way, then. Okay. Sorry. So now we're going to call URL, URL, and it's still not a function. Well, okay, now I'm going to have to see what the hell I actually did for, for earlier. Ah, oh, man. Ah. Um... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just fetch URL. You don't even need this in front of it. So after making 10 mistakes, uh, I'm going to quickly check to see who's here. Uh, I don't think anyone useful is here. No offense, but I think it's just bots right now. Um, looks like the stream's still going, which is good. Okay. Um... How do I do it? Okay, going back here. Okay, so what, what is this going to return? It's going to return what's called a promise. And there it is. It returns a promise. A promise is a JavaScript uh, sort of weirdness that just says, I will eventually give you something. So, but not right now. So what do we do with a promise? Well, with a promise, we always use, I think, uh, let me quickly check. To make, we do a then statement, but I'm going to see how I do that exactly. Uh, Okay, give me a 
this up here. Oh, it's got okay. all sorts of crazy, ver all sorts of crazy files here. Okay. With the promise, we use the then statement. What a promise does is when it's done, it, we can have it call a method. So, let's see. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do this very simply. We're not going to try to combine stuff. And again, we're going to use some temporary variable names here because JavaScript uh, programmers usually combine all of this. So we will do that eventually. But for right now, when we're learning, we're going to say, okay, when you have fetched the URL, which actually is just the first step of it, but when you've done that, call the function called f1. Okay? So let's write a function called f1. Uh, now this is... Um, okay. This is uh, the function that's called by then will have... Um, actually, am I... Yeah, I might be wrong about this. Uh, we'll have let's. I think it has one. I think it, I think it has two arguments, but I could be wrong. And it might just have one argument. Uh, usually, two things can happen with the promise when it's done. Uh, it could either be resolved, which means it's done the right thing, or it can be rejected, meaning something went bad. And it's, the rejected is not the right word, but there is another word meaning uh, it failed. Um, for some reason, I think if you do this, you're cheating and you're just using. Actually, let's call this. Uh, res and log it. I think this is cheating because here we're actually pretending that it's necessarily going to uh, succeed so we don't we ignore the other case which is bad but let's see what this does so promise and you'll notice we got a response okay um, so what is a res what is the response object well console log doesn't seem to tell us much about it maybe we can var dump it and see what we I think this actually will work what can we do with the response now that we have it? It's not what you think it is. It's not the data we want, unfortunately. Okay. Miss yeah, all right. God damn it. Okay. Okay, so this is what a prom this is what the res well, okay. Just to make things less confusing, I'm not gonna go ahead and log the promise anymore. Um and notice that it's asynchronous, by the way. Notice that it actually logs the promise before it logs the results of F1, because the promise exists before it gets resolved. So now, let's see what happens. Die, okay, and again, notice, by the way, that the die, which is later in the code, is run, quote-unquote, run first, because we're actually waiting on the T, on, on the promise to be, we're waiting on the network data. Okay, uh, type cores. Again, this is actually something that, if you try to get data in general from somewhere, is going to be a big headache for you, because for uh, security reasons, you don't you don't want to let JavaScript take the user get data from anywhere for the user because it could do all sorts of terrible things. In this case, though, the Overpass API has set up their server with the uh, cores permitted. It's more complicated than that, so we can get d its data, and if you're an end user, you can get its data without having to worry about privacy issues. Okay, um, let's see. So type URL redirected status uh, okay body used false and then I think I'm gonna keep this up until we're done with this part of it and then we'll we'll stop. Um, so this is the URL which we, we knew about. Um, didn't get redirected status for 200 okay true status text true status text okay headers and I think. At this point, we can actually look at the header. We can't look at the body yet, it turns out. But we can look at the headers. Let's see if we can do that. Um, entries, keys, values for each. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I don't think I've done this before. I'm going to look at the header's keys. The headers of a web requester um, basically tells you what kind of server is being run, it might give you an e-tag, which I don't know what that is. It might give you a timestamp. Let's find out what it gives you. Uh, well, let's find out what the keys are, assuming that this is going to work. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like keys we'd have to go next to because we don't really care about the header. This is just sort of a, a fun thing to do. Okay, so what do we do now with this response that we have? It's, it's, notice it's a response object. It's not, a, it's not text. It's not a URL. 
It's a response object. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, we want to get the t we want to get the body of this basically, which is the response text. Um, except I'm pretty sure I want actually I think I want JSON. Um, so let's go ahead and look at. Uh, yeah, JSON is a function. Let's look at the JSON variable of this function because I want the JSON data, and I'm actually just going to evaluate the JSON data because um, it's actually really nice. Um, and now I should get a function. So why am I getting a function out of this? Wait, why am I getting a function? Sorry, <laughs> I'm calling the function JSON. I'm not looking at the function itself. And now I should get another promise, but I actually expected that. And the reason for this is, <laughs> after you've gotten the headers, you still don't have the body yet. This is, a, this is again, a very weird sort of slow process. So what should we do with the promise? Well, the only thing we can do with the promise, which is to then it. And again, that's not really true. You can do other stuff with the promise, but mostly we're going to just... So what do we want to do then? Well, then, hey, why don't we call function f2? Because, you know, we can. Um, and now function f2 will also, and again, we're cheating and pretending that everything's going to go okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure jo real JavaScript programmers would be unhappy at this point, but screw them. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we get now. Now, no, of course, if you're a programmer, you know this res and this res have nothing to do with each other, and it's not an issue because res is not defined at the global level. So let's see what this does. Let's see what happens... Uh, when we have get the header. Hey, look at that. That's beautiful JSON stuff, isn't it? Gorgeous. And this is the actual data that uh, that um, is provided by uh, the Overpass I API. Um, and I believe this is an actual JSON object. We could actually uh, do stuff with it. Like, for example, we could just look at the version. Not very exciting, of course. Um, and the version is not a method. It's a it's a it's a it's a variable. It's a thingy. Yeah, it's a it's a variable. So it's not. We don't need to call. It, we don't need to do parentheses on it. Um, now I think what we really want. We don't really need the version of this crap. I think we what we really want here is. Uh, let's see how it's doing. This generator. Blah blah blah. blah OSM three S. That's just. Uh, how it gets it. There's a little bit of the overpass API. I'm not going to explain, but it, it does some stuff here, does some magic here. Um, this document is from, is available under Elements is actually where we want. I don't know why the hell it keeps doing that, but anyway, Elements is what we want. That is the, that's the nodes, relations, and all that crap. Uh, elements, right there. Um, so now, and because they're really important, we're going to go and give them a name. So now um, the elements are going to be made up of. Again, you can check the uh, the uh, the console log, but basically so they're going to be uh, nodes, ways, and relations that are related to this area. Um, let me actually console log the else for edification purposes. Uh, never going to use the word edification again. Oh, that didn't work out too well, did it? Um, all right. Okay. Well, let's console log. I, I, I think I just missed it by slightliness. So let's do this. Let's see what it was. It might have been elements, actually. Oh, it was element, wasn't it? Um, elements. Well, I'm, in, I'm a moron. In general, but also right now. Okay. So else, let's run this. And remember, it takes a while. And here we have nodes. Uh, by the way, every time we do this, we do hit overpasses uh, server. Uh, we're not running it too fast, so I don't think it's a problem. Uh, I am going to actually, uh, I might actually make this into a local file. In other words, download it once and access it as a file, uh, which should be nicer to overpass the server, maybe not as nice to replit server, but whatever. Okay, so... Now that we've console logged else, and I think else is going to have like 
three three different uh, variables in it. One is no, actually, it's, I mean, it's not right. Everything here is a um, it's just an array. Okay, so I wonder how long this array is. And this is actually going to help me decide whether or not I've taken too big of a chunk of data from them. 988. That's actually not too bad. Um, so what can we do with this uh, data that we've now that we've picked it up? Um, well, lots of stuff, of course. Um, let's start by looping our way through it. In other words, let's, it's an array. We can loop through it. And let's look at the individual elements and see what we can do with them. One thing we can do with them is we can put them on the map. And that is, in fact, what I'm going to do. Uh, and that is probably going to be the end of the stream for today. So there's lots of ways to go through an array, and probably JavaScript programmers will get annoyed with me for doing this. But this is how you would do it in other languages. And and let's. This is going to be really ugly, though. Um, so we can look at the ith element. Now, just to be a little bit nicer to ourselves, let's just look at the first five elements. And instead of changing the for loop to just go to five, we'll say if i is greater than five, so it's going to be actually six or seven elements. Uh, last. Oh, hang on. Break. Last is the Perl version. We're going to pop out of the loop. So we're going to look at the first five elements, pop out of the loop, because right now we don't, we don't really need all of them. OK, so fantastic. Node, 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 node. Um, right now, we only want to map the nodes. We don't want to deal with the ways or the relations, although we will. Um, each node has an ID. That's something that uh, OpenStreetMap assigns it, and that we will need because the ways are made up of IDs, not of latitudes and longitudes. A latitude and a longitude. So, in order to um, in order to put this on the map, now this is going to be a terrible way of doing this. We're going to create a circle. Uh, sorry, yeah, let's go ahead and do a circle just to be obnoxious. We're going to create a circle and put it on the map. Um, but we're not going to keep track of, we're not going to assign a variable to the circle. So, I mean, we will, but we'll change it each time. Um, so that means we can't do anything with the circles once we've put them on the uh, map. That's terrible, but again, just to get the circles on there, we'll do this. Later, when we put nodes and stuff, we're going to keep track of which node we're putting in. Um, actually, we can do that here, I guess, with the node ID. Uh, now, be careful here. We don't want arrays that are this size. It's way too big. Uh, we can, however, use associative arrays and treat this as a string, um, which seems a little bit strange, but it's actually uh, it's actually okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, <laughs> what do I want to do? I think I'm going to declare points to be an array just in the main script, and points are what I'm going to call nodes because that's what they actually are. And to declare an oh no no no. To declare an associative array, you do this. So this is not going to be a numerical array. It's going to be associative, even if its keys happen to look like numbers. Uh, that that's going to be like a that's important because we don't. If you create an array and give this as an index, you're going to create an array so huge, it's not going to be useful. It, uh, well, actually, JavaScript probably won't handle it. Um, and then. Um, The nodes are the actual nodes. The dots are what we're going to put on the map. They're going to be our little circly things. So, and we will clean this up, by the way, where instead of F1 and F2, we will uh, chain together on line 40 all of this uh, so we can, it, you know, because JavaScript, JavaScript programmers don't usually go this simple. This was intended for educational purposes. We show you how we go through a, a, a promise re resolution. Okay. So just for the first five points for right now. And because I snubbed circles earlier, we will say dots of i. Uh, it has a, I don't know if this, this should work, actually. Uh, equals, let's go back over here. This is actually more useful than my old code, so I'm just going to go directly here. Um, and this uses as a, a template. Uh, and again, because we need to keep track of the circle, we, we can't just add it to the map at the same time. So L circle, um, 
let's go ahead and create yet another variable. The else itself is going to be else five. So this is one element in the array. Um, and then we're going to console log it, but we're just going to use its variable name. So over here, and again, it is latitude, longitude. So you'll notice that each day, elt lat, elt lon, and I'm pretty sure 200 meters is going to be like way too big. Actually, I forget how I did it earlier. Um, it's 200 meters might be too, well, let's find out. And again, we're just doing five of them for right now. And we've done a lot of stuff, so this is a good time to sort of test to see if uh, missing semicolon before statement. Sure, why not? Um, it's really helpful when it doesn't tell you what line number it's on. Um, before statement. Um, okay, maybe I need to do this. Still doesn't like it. Do we need some microphone here? Okay, now, Replit is actually supposed to tell you where your code is going wrong. Auto format might help me with that by telling me what's wrong here. And maybe I'll put, this shouldn't have anything to do with it though. Um, now, the one thing I'm worried about is does if JavaScript supports I++, uh, which I'm pretty sure it does, but, you know, like I've been wrong before. Um, all right, now, okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit of another programming technique very common, uh, commenting out code. So we're going to find where the problem is by commenting out F2 entirely, and if the, if the, um, yay, the error message went away, so it is an F2 that we have a problem. And I'm sure there's someone out there who's seeing it. Well, no one's listening. There's someone who's listening. They would have probably seen it by now. So, come on, come on, find there. Let's comment out this line and see if that's the uh, that's the bad line. Okay, so it does not like this line. Dot. And I. Th I think I may know why, but let's see if this still causes the problem. Yep. Um, I think this is not how you're supposed to put in an associative. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Even though you declare an associative array with braces, you actually set its values using brackets. So that's a fun little fact about JavaScript that you probably don't care about. Well, you do because it messes me up. Okay, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Now the question is, have we actually drawn the dots? And hopefully the answer is yes, because otherwise it's going to look stupid. Uh-oh, something went wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. At this point, we do need to get rid of the uh, the die state, because we actually now want everything else to happen as well. So let's go ahead and do that. <coughs> and either I made the circles too small, or they are just not showing up, or something else bad has happened. So let's see if we can figure that out. So first of all, let's see if they're going into the right place, which it means... Um, um, okay, else this should create a new circle. Oh, and then why don't we console log.side to see if it actually is a circle and does all the magic we want. And it's quite possible for some reason that they made this long lat, but I don't think so. So, and again, we're using degrees everywhere, which is just the way they do it. So let's see if we can look at this element that we... Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Semicolon. 
Um, so it looks like it's there. We will go ahead and not log the element itself. But... Yeah, these look like your basic decent circles, and they even have the latitude and longitude set correctly. So why are they not showing up here? And my guess is maybe I made them 200 meters. I thought it would be too big, but it might be too small. So let's up their size to like a kilometer. And also it might be that these are degrees, and that would mean it's too large. So like Goldilocks, I have to sort of figure out where I want this to be. Put this over here. Okay. Still not seeing them, and I maybe it's because the radius is in degrees. And of course, that would be like so huge that it's going to mess up. Uh, you might see it like a like a huge thing. So let's for right now make it one degree, which is actually still going to be way too big. But at least it'll see. If we'll see if we've. Uh yeah, that didn't work. All right. So what am I doing wrong here? Else or oh yeah. This creates the circle, but it doesn't actually put it on the map. I'm a moron. So we do have to, of course, do dots i. I think I had that earlier, but I took it away because I wanted to declare the dot separately from putting it on the map. So this should actually do it. And, boy, now I have no idea how it's going to do it. Oh, here we are, here we are, here's some nodes. Now these nodes aren't particularly interesting because they're just sort of random anonymous nodes. Um, and in fact, the only reason we're ever going to use these is to connect the dots to create a path. And in this case, the path is running water circle southeast. Um, now, one thing I need to test here is the last time I tried this, there were so many nodes that putting them all on the map slowed things down tremendously. Um, here I'm going to put them all on the node. I'll put them all on the map. Uh, one thing I need to do before we do that is I need to make sure that I'm only looking at nodes. We're going to skip over uh, ways and relationships for now. So if else type equal equal, I think JavaScript people like this, node, um, no, not equal equal. If it's not a node, we will continue the loop with the next iteration. Now it turns out that OSM actually puts all the nodes first, so we could just break out of the loop there. But it's better practice to look at each element and say if it's a node, we're just going to ignore it for now. And now, let's see if this uh, freezes like it did before. Oh, wow. And actually, this looks okay. It looks like we're getting few enough nodes, and they are all within our little little box guy. And notice, by the way, this is actually uh, this Four Hill golf course um, is a circle. And this is actually, of course, a polygon with many vertices, but it is effectively a circle. Um, okay, so we have our nodes. The next thing is we need to connect these dots, the nodes, uh, to make ways, and in fact, for most nodes, we're not going to show the nodes directly. That's that's ugly, and uh, and the nodes are really just there to. Most of the nodes are there to define the ways. There are some important ones uh, that are actually uh, indicate locations. Uh, I think that's going to be it for the stream today. I don't see anyone. Do you have any questions or anything? Well, I don't think anyone's here. Uh, but if anyone is here, well, I guess Lurks is here. Uh, if anyone is here and has questions, uh, please ask them in the next uh, few seconds because I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream then download it and then see what a terrible stream it was which is uh, probably pretty bad okay and I guess no one joined the zoom chat at any point um, actually the zoom no no I'm sorry the zoom chat actually wasn't going because it timed out um, so so actually it's not even important uh, and again I can turn it on if someone wants to talk voice but for right now, I think we're going to uh, end meeting for all. Um, really? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please do whatever the hell it is you do in Twitch to contact me. Uh, I don't know what that is, actually. But whatever. Goodbye.